Okay, so today we are going to learn about using shadows and lighting in a scene. The things we are going to do in this video, I have actually done in previous tutorials. I'll put the link in the description, inshallah. This is more of like a combination of those tutorials. Okay, before lighting, let's talk about render settings. In a detailed anime environment, there are some settings that should be enabled. The first one I'd recommend switching on is ambient occlusion or occlusion. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. This setting makes the scene render shadows between objects, adding more depth and authentic shadows. In short, it makes it look nice. If you want to know more about ambient occlusion, there are probably many tutorials on YouTube explaining it. The next setting is Bloom. This one has an obvious effect on the scene as well. It adds, what the name suggests, Bloom to things with light. In Blender 4.2 though, uh, bloom is something to add in the compositing tab and it's not in the properties I'd recommend that you experiment with the settings of both of these bloom and ambient occlusion uh, The threshold in bloom is especially important because setting it too low could make your scene too blown out and overexposed So make sure you play with these settings Another setting to play with is the shadow setting. The cascade option is very important and depending on the value you set it on, the shadows can either be very detailed or not so. Uh, this setting for soft shadow is also important and depends on the scene you're busy with. Uh, if you don't want any soft shadows, you of course need to uncheck this box. Finally, we move on to the color management tab. For display device, I recommend setting it to sRGB. And now for view transform. I think Blender's default is AGX. It's not a bad setting, um, it's okay. But for stylized scenes, specifically for anime, I'd recommend using the standard setting. It makes a huge difference regarding color. Let me show you uh, an example in the textured version of the scene. This is AGX and this is standard. Big difference. And then for look, I use either none or medium contrast. But play around with that and set it according to your liking. Okay, so that was our render settings. I hope I didn't bore you with that, apologies if I did. Uh, but now let's move on to lighting. I'm going to use the three sun technique we did in a previous tutorial and then imitate the lighting in the reference. Link will be in the description. Another advantage to using references is learning how experts light up their scenes. The more you imitate these experts, the more skilled you'll get in that regard. So always use a reference and try to see why an artist's scene looks so good. For example, you see the light is coming from the window and then into the passage making these cool shapes. If it were just lighting coming from outside and not through the windows, you would not have these wonderful streaks of light hitting the door frame over here or these shapes on the floor. So always use a reference. You'll learn some cool things. Now, our lighting is done, but do you see this? This evil line over here is ruining our scene and leaking light through the corners of the passageway. This happens mostly when using a sun lamp. Now, you can either add a solidify modifier to take this away uh, and keep on making it thicker till this leakage disappears, but this can sometimes ruin how the mesh looks. So I don't normally do that. A simple method for me is to kind of make a light blocker I go outside of the mesh, bring in a cube, and make it kind of be an umbrella for the model. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just practical. Now the light leak is stopped by our big friend over here, which is wonderful. You can even apply a transparent shader to this umbrella thing if you see it in your render. So you know, you want to block it, you don't want to see it because maybe your camera goes out or whatever. Just make sure to keep the shadow setting as opaque. You want it to cast shadow. You don't want it to still leak light, you know? And that's it for this tutorial. There's definitely some other things you could uh, learn about lighting and shadows. Uh, I mentioned them in a few other tutorials, which I will link in the description as well, inshallah. I would like to give a huge thanks to everyone constantly supporting me on the Patreon. But that is it for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed and see you in the next one. Alright, bye.